Hi, Hi Yeti. How are you? Good. Thank yourself. Good. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. What's new? What's new? Well, actually, here is what's new with the insurance. Um, well, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. People are not too happy in with the um, with the insurance markets and where they are and and where they're going. Um, the the prices they're um, they're really expensive right now. The insurance companies. Um, I know this is going to sound weird, but they really don't want to insure anybody. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, they're making it really hard for you to buy insurance. Um, and to be honest, the, uh, for the last couple of years during COVID, the insurance companies, they're not really making money. Uh-huh. They're actually losing money. Um, and that's a big reason why they're like, stop, like, no more business. <laughs> really? <laughs> because they're, they're losing money. So who wants to do business if you're losing money? I hear a lot of stories, Ari. Like they're taking like 30 days for you to get a quote over the phone and they yeah. still i mean you still have to go through a lot of yeah so there's there's two things right <clears throat> so the insurance companies they want to slow down the business that they write and number two they're being very careful to who they insure mm-hmm. so that is the reason for the the waiting period so they want to take the time to be sure that okay this is somebody that i want to insure Okay. And number two, um, which is natural, like a lot of people are going to be discouraged by the 15 or 30 day wait. Yes. And they're going to say, oh, forget it. Like, I'll go somewhere else. Okay. And to the insurance companies, unfortunately, they're okay with that right now. They're like, okay, we didn't really want to insure you anyways. <laughs> um, so we're okay with you going somewhere else for now. And that's the mentality of a, a lot of the companies right wow. now. Yeah. So they just literally, they don't care, basically. It's not that they don't care. Um, so in in California, if I'm an insurance company and I want to raise my prices, mm-hmm. the state of California has to approve it. The process of approving the prices, it takes about six months. Are you serious? Yeah. So think about it. If... Uh, if you go to your boss and say, hey, I want to raise, and your boss says, okay, let me think about it. I'll give it to you in six months. What's your reaction going to be? Forget about it. <laughs> I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Or maybe the first time, like, the first time se lo perdonas, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, business is tough, mm-hmm. and whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. But then you ask for it again. And says, okay, we'll get back to you in six months. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like, I need to, my, the milk is more expensive right now. Mm-hmm. The gas is more expensive right now. Yes. Um, uh, my insurance is more expensive right now. <laughs> I need my raise, like, now, yes. not yes. in six months. Mm-hmm. So that is sort of what's happening to the insurance. Like, for the past few years, the insurance companies have been asking, like, hey, we need to change the prices, we need to change the prices, we need to change the prices. And for the past three years, the requests have gone unheard. So now they're at the point where, yeah, we'd rather not sell you insurance if we're going to lose money. Why continue? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, well, we already know how the insurance works. Well, it's, it's a business, right? Like yes. As much as you don't want to hear it, <clears throat> as much as people don't like paying for insurance, mm-hmm. it's 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 it's. it's it's an important part, right? Yes. You cannot buy a car without insurance. You cannot buy a house without insurance. And even in business, like uh, life insurance is a big part of big business. So it affects a lot of the, the day-to-day uh, for businesses and for consumers, right? Because you can't buy insurance, you can't buy a car. <laughs> They're not going to let you borrow money for a car if you don't have insurance. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you're trying to buy a house and you cannot get insurance the bank isn't going to give you the money to buy the house. Okay. So it slows everything down. So, El, Eddie, the million-dollar question, is this going to change anytime soon? Or <coughs> So what happened What happened last week um, is a little bit of, like, back-and-forth politics. <coughs> the, the, com- the insurance commissioner, Lara, uh, has says that, okay, like, 
the insurance companies are complaining that they are not able to charge the correct prices, but they're not asking for the rate increases that supposedly they need. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the reason uh, for the back and forth is he's correct. An insurance company can file for a rate increase 6.9% at a time. If an insurance company files more than 6.9, then they can open a public hearing um, and the insurance company has to show their taxes and all their reports, um, which is an even bigger process. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so to speed it up, insurance companies don't file for more than 6.9 because then the process is longer. So then they have like multiple requests of 6.9, 6.9, 6.9, 6.9. Okay, the, the insurance commissioner made that statement, and then all of a sudden you have the big companies uh, filing for big increases, 30%, 40%, 50% in some cases. Um, at the end of the week, Governor Newsom issued uh, an executive order um, basically telling the commissioner, Lara, like, I need you to speed this up. Um, I need you to work on the California Fair Plan, and like this has to stop like now. Like now. <clears throat> and then, like almost immediately, the commissioner Lara issues like his own statement. So it all happened really fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it looks like it was all planned, <laughs> and it's it's politics, right? They're trying to position sure. themselves to like look good right mm -hmm. now. Like, oh, we're helping the people. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, um, what the people don't understand is that the fix that's coming is 20 30 40 50 percent increases on your insurance wow so that's huge yeah so it's not going to go back to oh i used to pay you know a hundred dollars a month for full coverage now it's going to be it's 150 200 dollars uh, for example you know mm -hmm. um <clears throat> when i bought my house back in 2000 19 mm -hmm. so check this out guys it was almost 3,000 square feet single story house mm -hmm. okay uh, brand new house my insurance on that house it was a little over six hundred dollars really month. yeah three thousand wow so That's... what is it, like 60 bucks mm -hmm. a month yeah that was really cheap which was the normal uh -huh. during the covid years to find six seven hundred dollar insurance and that was a big house, that I, okay? So we just did a quote yesterday for a client buying a 1,500-square-foot house, mm -hmm. so half of the size of my house, um, and he could not find insurance. <clears throat> the insurance plan that we found for him, which was the only one he was able to find, mm -hmm. was $3,400. Are you serious? For a 1,500-square-foot house. And he doesn't have a choice. He has to buy it if he wants to buy his house. <clears throat> so just to give you an idea, that is where the homeowner insurance market oh my is gosh. going. <clears throat> uh, we had another customer where he was uh, early 20s, mm -hmm. uh, 22, 23 years old, and uh, he's buying a used car. Okay, <clears throat> uh, It was like a 2000... 10, 2012 Nissan Altima. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a very expensive car, right? Um, his uh, He's taking a loan to buy the car, so he needs full coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, his insurance payment was $330 a month. No way. So think about that. His car payment was probably $300 a month. I, I, I didn't ask him, but I can just imagine. Yeah. For that kind of car... It's probably three hundred dollars a month, so the insurance was more expensive for him than <laughs> the car payment. So that is what's coming down the line. So there's going to be some major adjustments uh, coming soon. So Eddie, what you're telling me is, for people that is trying to buy a house right now, they need to think about the insurance before they do any. Any decisions? Is it, I mean, what do you think about this? Well, when you when you buy a house, um, yes, um, you right now the interest rate also reached like its highest that it's ever been in mm -hmm. twenty years. The insurance is expensive and it's not getting easier; it's going to get worse. 
Um, is it a bad time to buy a house? It, it depends. Um, mm-hmm. The houses is not something that you look at, like uh, where it's uh, in six months or a year. The house is supposed to be a long-term thing. So do houses go up in value? Yeah. Houses always go up in value. So am I going to lose money by buying a house? No. Is it better to buy a house than renting? Yes. Always better. Mm -hmm. As long as you can afford it. But think about this, Eddie. We didn't have the insurance problem before. Yeah. So this is something new for the homeowners. Yeah. So imagine your mortgage payment and on top of that, like a how much you were looking about what like four hundred five hundred dollar monthly payment on just the insurance <coughs> on top of the mortgage, that's a big difference. Yeah. So depending on on the house that you buy and the area that you buy, um, it could be four or five hundred dollars a month. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah. It was not like before. <coughs> no, but uh, and again, everybody's case is different. Uh-huh. You just have to look at your case. Um, if the area that you live in, your rent is thirty five hundred dollars, four thousand dollars, and given all these things, your mortgage is going to be four thousand mm-hmm. dollars. <clears throat> well, if that was me, I'd rather pay four thousand dollars in mortgage than pay thirty five hundred four thousand in rent. Well, yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> so everybody's case is it's is different, different. Um, and if if it fits into your budget, it's always a good time to buy a house. All right, I guess it makes sense. But like we said before, I mean, this problem, we didn't have it like three, four years ago. <coughs> and yeah. finally, it's, you know, it's getting. Yeah. Well, so you saw something similar <coughs> go through um, the healthcare um, in the uh, about 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, for years, people were trying to pass, uh, not people, the government was trying to pass the. Uh, some type of like government health insurance, mm-hmm. right? <coughs> so um, here comes the Affordable Act Care. So the Affordable Act Care was supposed to make it easier for people to buy insurance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Specifically those with pre existing conditions and health problems. Those people were having a hard time buying insurance. Like it was mm-hmm. expensive for them, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what happens? The insurance comes up with the government comes up with the affordable Act care. Okay, so the government is going to help you pay for your insurance, mm-hmm. and the insurance companies cannot cancel you uh, if you have diabetes, cancer, any pre existing conditions. They they mm-hmm. cannot cancel you. They cannot even ask you. Like they have to. Everybody's the same. <clears throat> um, not everybody's the same, right? Because mm-hmm. if you have diabetes or you have another health condition, you require more care. Than somebody that does not have it, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so what happened when that started? Um, back then, bef- w- before the Affordable Black Care, um, my insurance plan was about $100 a month for my personal health insurance, okay? Today, for a similar plan, it's almost $700 a month. Wow. For just just me. So think about that. My health insurance costs went up 700% in the course of like 10 years. Okay. So now compare it to what's happening um, in the insurance industry right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Before COVID, the uh, insurance commissioner, uh, at the beginning of COVID, um, the the years prior to COVID, there had been record-breaking fires every single year. In California, like billions and billions of dollars yeah. every single year in California. And it's getting worse and worse. At the beginning of COVID, what happened? The commissioner, Lara, said, okay, um, insurance companies, um, the state of California is depending on real estate, uh, tax revenue to fund the state right now. We don't want you to do anything that's going to mess up the real estate industry. So even though you guys um, want to raise the rates of the people that had fires, you cannot. Even though maybe you want to cancel those policies, you cannot. Uh, the, the communities, the counties that were affected by wildfires, you cannot touch them. 
So in California, that's like every county. <laughs> yeah. Every county was affected by fires, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So the insurance companies were forced to continue doing something they didn't want to do for three, four years. Okay. So now here we are several years removed from COVID, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. So compare that to the health insurance. Okay. Um, in health insurance, everybody was mixed in together and the prices went up. Back then, the insurance companies wanted to cut the problem at the, p- the communities that were in fire areas, mm-hmm. and they weren't allowed to. Now, everybody got mixed in together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a s- plus you had other things happen, right? The cost of labor went up, the cost of material went up, um, uh, construction got more expensive. Um, so all these things bundle up, and now you're seeing the effect. Um, the more expensive insurance. Mm-hmm. Hey, Eddie, I guess it's enough (laughs) about insurance. We want to know about yourself. Yes. Who is Eddie Valtodano and Uh, why you decide to join the insurance industry? So I started in the insurance business at a very young age. Um, It was my first job when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to high school here in Temecula Valley, Temecula Valley High School. <clears throat> and um, to be honest, I I didn't really like school. Um, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want nothing. I'm guilty. To, <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want anything to do with school. Yeah, it wasn't that I wasn't good at it. Uh, I, I always had good grades. I just didn't want to be there. I didn't want to participate um, in sports. I didn't want to participate in any activities. Um, I didn't want any of that stuff. <clears throat> so. I had the habit of I was always late to school. Why is that? <laughs> I was late to everything. <laughs> I was late to everything. It was hard for you. To, you were not a morning person. Or no, no. I just didn't care. Oh, I see. Okay. I really didn't care. All right. Um, I, I, to be honest, I don't know how like my mom like uh, allowed this, but there were days where I would just wake up mm-hmm. and I didn't want to go to school. Like, I just didn't feel like it. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I would just stay home and watch TV. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't want to go, and she wouldn't force me to go. Um, and I to this day I don't understand why, <laughs> but she gave me that that freedom, you know, <clears throat> to do it. So, if I didn't want to go to school, I wouldn't go to school. Mm-hmm. If I didn't want to, if school started at seven thirty, and mm-hmm. I didn't want to show up till eight o'clock, mm-hmm. I wouldn't show up till eight o'clock. Um, so I had a very bad attendance. <laughs> In school, at my school, um, when when the bell rings, they would lock the doors. To really? The class. Yeah. So if you were late, <coughs> you couldn't get into the class. Uh huh. So they would make you go sit in the library until next period. Okay. So there's one day I was late to school, mm-hmm. and the doors were locked, so I had to go sit in the library, and there was a, a local company that was hiring like part-time work for students okay so i went and applied and um <clears throat> so it was after school job um uh, it was like i don't know 16 so my mom would pick me up from school mm-hmm. take me to work i would work from like three o'clock to like six or seven. Oh, okay and then go home and i did that all through school um when I when summer break, um, they let me work full time during summer, mm-hmm. and I got to really learn a lot. Um, I liked the atmosphere of the environment mm-hmm. of being in an office. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I was the youngest one. I was in high school, and mm-hmm. everybody was in their twenties, thirties. Mm-hmm. So the conversation around the office was different. And the the owner um, of the office, who became one of my best friends now, mm-hmm. um, he sort of like let me be his like right hand person and wow. learn um, sort of like apprenticeship mm-hmm. um, from him and just uh, shadow him and see how he did a lot of stuff. So I, I really liked it. Like mm-hmm. um, I I loved everything about it. Um, uh, a lot of the insurance business is problem solving, mm-hmm. and I was always really good at math. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so 
math problem solving it's the same thing mm-hmm. um i started uh helping them with the accounting mm-hmm. and then i started seeing how much money people were making so and you I, like that yeah in my <laughs> mind i'm like i can do this <laughs> like uh i'm bilingual uh-huh. these people are not bilingual uh-huh. um i can do this and i can do it better yeah um and um he also gave me the confidence to to do it because mm-hmm. he gave me a lot of freedom to mm-hmm. do things that, you know, because it was a small business, uh-huh. um, maybe you wouldn't do at another company, you know? Mm-hmm. <coughs> so I got to learn a lot, and um, I liked it. And mm-hmm. um, I couldn't wait to get out of school <laughs> to go to go work. work. Yeah. Uh, so how does it feel to have a mom that is from Mexico and a dad that is from Nicaragua? Um, I mean, it's a different culture, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so, the, um, we're all very, very proud, to be honest with you. Um, the way I look at it is um, when uh, everything that they did to get here, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't, it was very unselfish because what they did, it wasn't for them. It was to give us mm-hmm. a better opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> and uh, I want to make that very clear, opportunity. It wasn't like here, I'm going to hand you this. Mm-hmm. It was so you can have better opportunities. Mm-hmm. It's still up to you to do the work and take advantage of the opportunity. Because exactly. there was nothing that was given to us. It was mm-hmm. an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, something that I talk about a lot is, um, there are things that are different in our culture that are different from other cultures. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure it's the same in your house. If I was to go visit your house, your mom would give me coffee, refresco, Mm -hmm. uh, frijoles, like (laughs) whatever was on the stove. Yes. Uh, cookies, bread, um, and she would continue offering until I accepted something. Mm-hmm. And so you say I, yes. And then if I didn't accept it, she would probably get offended, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. she would open her house to make sure I feel comfortable. Okay. <clears throat> so that's something that is not just in me, but like in our culture, mm-hmm. that um, uh, it wasn't that it was taught to you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you learned it because... It was like in your every day, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. Um, when you went to go visit somebody, what did your parents teach you the first thing to do? Bring something with you. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't go with empty hands, you know. Especially if it's a barbecue or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so you saw your parents doing that, uh-huh. uh, and your family doing that, and now it's it's automatic. Yes. You don't have to be told like. Oh, Claudia, you have to bring this. Yes. Now it's, okay, what can I bring? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> and you know that when you get somewhere, the first thing you do is you say hi. Oh, of course. <laughs> and the first thing you do when you leave is you say bye to mm-hmm. everybody. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes you longer to say bye. <laughs> than, <laughs> you Saying know? bye to everybody. <clears throat> but it's something that they didn't teach you. Mm-hmm. You learned it from the culture mm-hmm. and that that's very something that's very different about our culture not every culture has it mm-hmm. um and i think it really helps us like uh, in to uh, get united <coughs> i guess yeah because when you're in when you're in sales regardless of what you sell cars houses clothing jewelry cell phones mm-hmm. um the first thing is they have to like you Whoever you're working with mm-hmm. uh, has to like you. Mm-hmm. If they don't like you, they're not going to open up and trust you. And if they don't open up and trust you, you're not going to sell them anything. <laughs> so that the childhood of seeing all those things and learning all those things, mm-hmm. it helped me now because you get to it's, uh, bonding with people. Mm-hmm. It's a little easier now because it was something that in my culture, like it comes like comes naturally especially when you're kind of shy yeah <laughs> are you shy Eddie? i think so <laughs> yes you are <laughs> i've been knowing you for how many years now yeah like 15 years oh my gosh eddie how do you do it 
to yeah. handle your business and your personal life? Um, Do you have any kids? <clears throat> no kids. It's it's hard um, because you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. um, I have the very like old school mentality. Mm -hmm. um, like I was talking, um, it's hard now because the culture has changed. Where now men and women, uh, they both work. Um, the way the kids are raised is different. Mm -hmm. The culture is very different. Um, like, uh, I was having this conversation with my friend Chris the other day, um, and he sort of thinks the same way, where he works and his wife stays home with the kids, right? <coughs> Not every woman would be okay with that, because women now are used to working and being professional, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what my friend Chris said is, like, well, the kids don't need to dads or the kids kids don't need two moms you know the kids need dad who goes and works and brings home the money mm -hmm. and the wife is to take care of the money and take care of the family mm -hmm. and that's a team mm -hmm. right when both people work the team is different now because mm -hmm. now who takes care of the kids mm-hmm so I have that mentality, and I know a lot of people don't agree with it mm -hmm. because the culture has changed so much, but that part has been hard. And when you work, <coughs> like, you have kids, right? Yes, I do. Okay. How many kids do you have? Three. Okay. So what comes first for you? Family. Your kids? Yes. Okay. So for you to be a business owner, your business has to come first. Like, you drop everything for your kids. I drop everything for, for, business. for my business. <clears throat> and if, you, uh, I'm not saying you can, you can do it, it can be done in other ways, but most business owners... And moms are, are different, Eddie. Yeah. For moms, it's different. Well, most business owners are the same way. Like, you drop everything for your business, you know? Mm -hmm. um, when I first started... <clears throat> um, I was everything. I used to clean the bathrooms. I would make the coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. I would put the paper and the you printer. You have like 20 hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and you have to do it yeah. because it's your business. Mm -hmm. If nobody does it, then who does it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, um, I had two people that were out sick. Mm -hmm. So I had other plans yesterday. Mm -hmm. But guess what? My plans changed. Now I have to go back to the office. Mm -hmm. And I have to fill in because if there's two people less, that means that the rest of the people, they're going to get overworked. And then the customers, what happens to the customers? Like They'll get pissed mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. <coughs> because, oh, you know. But if you think about it, Eddie, our grandparents, they used to do it. You know, the mom at home. Yeah. Did that, you know, working, and it worked for them, and they worked together for how many years? Well, I have my grandparents, they were together for, like, 60 years. Yeah. My mom and my dad, 50 years. And they were business owners. I mean, so I don't know how they make it happen, but, I mean, they make it happen. <clears throat> well, it's a different different culture, I think. Mm -hmm. Different culture. And um, there, there always has to be the... The alpha, mm -hmm. the strong person, and there has to be somebody that sort of uh, takes a back—I don't know—takes a back seat mm -hmm. and lets the person control. You know, mm -hmm. <coughs> like um, they—they they say often that like uh, being the boss, it doesn't mean that you have all the answers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it doesn't mean that you know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, being boss means that you steer the ship the best way you can. Mm -hmm. There's going to be bumps and there's going to be difficult, you know, path, but you steer it the best way you can. So how is it feel, Eddie, compared two years ago for what you have right now? Because I notice, I mean, you're not the same person. I yeah. mean, you're an amazing person. Thank you. You're an amazing human being and um, I... Um, I mean, humble to be your friend for so many years. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> Don't cry. But um, how does it feel? 
I mean, obviously, you're making so many changes, like, in your personal life and in your industry. And, uh, I mean, right now, we were sitting for, like, what, 30 minutes? And you have, like, 20 missing calls already. Yeah. Like, seriously, you're all over the place. Yeah. How is that? Like, how is it working for you? <coughs> um, so, this, this is going to sound weird, but... Um, um, in from my perspective, um, every time you want to take a step forward, mm -hmm. you take a step back. Okay, so I wanted to take a step forward um, and uh, let people know, like, okay, this is Eddie. This is what he's about. Mm -hmm. This is what he knows. Mm -hmm. But to be able to do that, um, we have to take a step back somewhere. Mm -hmm. because there's not enough time. Like, I need the time to be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> how could I do How could I do both? Um, so the way I took a step back is by hiring more people, mm -hmm. okay? So I took, uh, uh, I took huge pay cuts, like, to be able to hire more people. Mm -hmm. Um because right now with the way the insurance industry is, um, we're not selling what we used to sell a few years ago. Yep. We are not growing. So it's not that I took, uh, we're making all this extra money and now we have more uh, people like at the, at the office. Mm -hmm. Like, no, like we're making the same, if not less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but now we've added to the payroll. A lot of the companies, they close out yeah. last year and this year. <clears throat> so... I I didn't want to do that. I didn't mm -hmm. want to go backwards. Mm -hmm. um, I decided, okay, um, I can take a step backwards, and I don't mind paying myself less money mm -hmm. um, and bringing on additional people. Um, because right now, in a time where, like you said, companies are closing, companies are firing, mm -hmm. um, it's a good opportunity for me to take advantage mm -hmm. um, and grow. Um, the money's not there because we're not selling. Yeah. So again, it's me taking a step back financially and making less money, mm -hmm. um, but being okay with it short term mm -hmm. because the way I look at it, it's uh, it's an investment in myself. It's an investment in the future. Mm -hmm. When things turn around <clears throat> and people start hiring again mm -hmm. and uh, starting over, um, well, I'm not starting over. Exactly. <laughs> we've continued through this whole thing, mm -hmm. and we've continued bringing on people, mm -hmm. and uh, you need people, like, in your yeah. office. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot, as much as you think that you can, you cannot do it alone. You can. <laughs> you need you people your team. in your mm -hmm. office. And that's where I've been lucky. Um, we've been able to add people, and we've been able to uh, different positions and different responsibilities that give me the freedom mm -hmm. to do what I do. Um, when I first started, um, um, trying to think. <coughs> so the, my first job that I had was at uh, Westside Insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay, at Westside Insurance. Um, check this out. At Westside Insurance, when I left there. I was just me personally, not the office, me personally. I was selling about 150 policies on a slow month. Wow. 180 on a good month. So I would walk into my office and I would have like six, seven, eight appointments like already lined up. Mm -hmm. People coming in to buy insurance. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so for those of you that are in the insurance business, like, think about that. Mm -hmm. When have you ever had six, seven, eight appointments lined up, ready to go, coming mm -hmm. in to buy insurance? Mm -hmm. Most insurance agents, they come in and they answer their emails, they answer their phone, mm -hmm. and they try to find somebody to sell them insurance. Yeah. I already had appointments lined up for the whole day. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times, like, I wouldn't even answer my phone because I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. I had somebody helping me, and mm -hmm. they would do all my paperwork, and uh, take messages and answer the mm -hmm. calls that I could. Those obtain. were the good years. <laughs> yeah. But think about that. Yeah. Uh, 150, 180 that was a lot. policies a month. 
um, fast forward to when I started my office, um, uh, six months in, I was doing over a hundred policies by myself still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was my limit. I couldn't do less than that more. Oh, more than that. I couldn't like, there was not enough time Mm -hmm. (laughs) because at that time I was by myself. Um, so it was me marketing, me selling, me doing customer service, me cleaning the office, wow. <laughs> uh, me doing everything. Mm-hmm. And that was it. I couldn't do no more. Um, so fast forward to today. Um, yesterday, I sold my first policy mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. Um, to give you an idea, like you asked, like how much has changed? Mm-hmm. Um People think it's weird when I say that. Like, I don't really sell insurance no more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because you're so busy doing so many things outside the office. Well, that's what I have my team for. Mm-hmm. Um, Araceli sells my policies. Mm-hmm. Cece does the policies. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't sit there and yeah. type. Like, um, They do all of it for me now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, those were big changes. Being, uh, letting go and letting them... <laughs> do it because there's there's mis- there's mistakes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they make not a lot but they make mistakes mm-hmm. and we're humans <laughs> well so like if you refer me a client uh-huh. and let's say that i give it they might get mad because i'm picking on them but let's say i give it to araceli <laughs> <laughs> <Poor Araceli. laughs> so Sorry, I, I give it to araceli <laughs> okay and then you call me two three hours later eddie what happened with the customer uh-huh. Well, I don't know. Like, I gave it to Araceli. Uh-huh. But you gave it to me. Yes. So you're expecting me mm-hmm, to, to handle take, it. To take care of it. And I do want you to <laughs> handle it. Every time I send you a lead, I'm like, Eddie. <laughs> um, but um, Araceli has been in the insurance business for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. So uh, CC too. CC has been in the business. Or, or, so they know very well mm-hmm. what they are doing. But they don't do it like how I do it. Mm-hmm, like you want, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they know what they're doing very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, it's, everyone's, we're still learning, like it's still a process. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting them to like do it the way I want them to do mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And then little things um, that are done differently. Um, uh, and they make mistakes because they're not me. Mm-hmm. Um even though they've been in the business for so long, they don't know, mm-hmm. nobody knows everything. Like, mm-hmm. I still make mistakes. Yeah. But a lot of times, on the other side, you, you expect it to be perfect. Yes. And like you said, we're all humans. Like, it's mm-hmm. not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, um, not that I want them to make mistakes, but I'm okay with, like, the little mistakes because that's how they learn. Like, those little mistakes, like, them having to figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure they get frustrated sometimes, but I do it on purpose mm-hmm. so that they can learn through it and become better. That's amazing, Eddie. Yeah. And you know what? You're you're going to be agree or disagree with this. Not a lot of the agents out there, they have people skills or good customer service. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, we do have those bad days where we just don't want to talk to people or yeah. we just don't want to help them the way we're supposed to. As an agent, I mean, it's our responsibility to do like 200% in our customer service. Yeah. What do you think about that? Um, I agree. Um, uh, if you're in sales, um, you are the face, right? Mm-hmm. So people see you first. And people, um, they have different um, uh, like interpretations. Uh, some people say that if you're in sales, you need to uh, be like groomed nicely. Mm-hmm. You need to have a suit. Um, you need to have a nice watch. Yeah. Uh, if you're a girl, you should be like in a dress or in heels mm-hmm. or have a nice purse or yeah. this and that. So that is the stereotype that you need to look like a certain way mm-hmm. to be successful in sales. Mm-hmm. Okay. I agree. Um, <clears throat> when you buy, the first thing you buy is with your eyes, right? Yeah. If you go to a f- like to buy food, mm-hmm. like there's a reason there's a picture of the food because you buy with your eyes 
first. Yeah. And there's no mistake of like the pictures that are on the menu. They're putting the pictures of what they want you to buy. Like that's why they're there. They're mm-hmm. not putting pictures of like a bean and cheese burrito. <laughs> they're putting ch- pictures of like the camarones uh-huh. or the cocktail or yeah. the michelada. Uh-huh. The things they want you to buy. There's yeah. not a bean and cheese burrito like on the menu, right? <clears throat> so uh, I agree with that part of it. But um, I, I take it a step further. Um, if I am selling to a customer um, or helping a customer that is dressed in a suit, uh, has a nice watch, has nice shoes, um, your jacket and tie, mm-hmm. then you need to be dressed like that too. Mm-hmm. Um, my customers and the people that I associate with, mm-hmm. um, they are never dressed in suits. They almost never have a tie and a jacket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Most of the people, they're wearing jeans mm-hmm. and they're wearing T-shirts or just like a casual shirt. Mm-hmm. So I try to dress in a way that I can relate to my customer mm-hmm. or to the people that I'm doing business with mm-hmm. so that they don't think that I'm better than them mm-hmm. or below them. Mm-hmm. We're on the same level. So that is the, the first part. Mm-hmm. And then the next part is, yeah, what comes out of your mouth. True. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they if they don't like you and they cannot relate with you and they don't feel like you're helping them, mm-hmm. then um, no, that, that, that's bad service. Mm-hmm. 